video for the day today. Um, the last type of ion that you're going to see in nomenclature is called a polyatomic ion. Poly means many or multiple. Um, atomic is atoms. So we have multiple atoms in an ion. And basically, the best way to describe these are groups of elements that are stuck together because they collectively have to share electrons in order to make full valence shells. So because they collectively need to share electrons, sometimes they need to find electrons, sometimes they need to get rid of extra electrons um, and transfer them to something else. But that is to get everybody to get a full valence shell. So because you end up with these groups of elements that are collectively sharing um, these extra electrons or they are getting rid of extra electrons in order to have full valence shells, they end up with a charge. Um, with these charges, they are carved in stone. You cannot change what they are. Um, there are lists of these. You actually have a list on the back of your periodic table that um, you guys got on the uh, first day, face-to-face, -face, or if you picked one up from the office, you have it as well. It's on the back. There's a list of them there. The same list is in the notes here in a couple slides. But um, the big deal with these is they cannot change their formulas. Whatever is printed on that list cannot change at all whatsoever. The charge doesn't change, um, and their name cannot change either. So if you have sulfate, it's going to stay sulfate no matter what. You don't change the ending to IDE. Uh, same thing if you have, I don't know, like nitrogen, or sorry, not nitrogen, nitrate. Um, nitrate is NO3, negative 1. You cannot change that NO3 or the nitrate name. So as we look at these polyatomic ions, you're going to see lists of them. And you cannot change what the formula is given, and you cannot change what the name is given. So what's going to happen a lot of times with these is you're going to see um, parentheses around them to lock them into place. If there's only one of them, parentheses are not used. You want to use parentheses, you can, it's up to you. Um, but here's an example of with parentheses, but that sulfate, A-T-E, that ending is a polyatomic ion. The polyatomic ion is SO4. The SO4 group has a negative two charge. Now that negative two charge, when you see it in a formula, is going to disappear, but the SO4 is locked into place. That whole group has a negative two charge, and that lets us use it in your ions. Same thing with sulfite. Sulfite um, is SO3 negative two. With your SO3 negative two, what's happening there is your three oxygens and sulfur, they had to find two electrons in order to give everything a full valence shell, so it ends up charged. Um, sulfite name cannot change. SO3 cannot change. The negative 2 is the charge of that group overall. So as you see these things on the back of your periodic table, um, they're always going to be given to you. Now it does say on the slide for the test you must know the 12 polyatomic ions that we learned before. Um, this year because of COVID we're not learning that. In a normal year you have the 12 that you're going to have to memorize. Um, Second semester, if everybody's face-to-face, -face, we're going to go back to normal and you'll have those 12 that you'll need to know. Um, by that point, you should know them anyways. But um, you do have, in a normal year, 12 polyatomic ions that you just have to know the names and the formulas for because it makes your life so much easier when it comes to the nomenclature because you're going to have to use them over and over and over all year long. So the list looks like this where you have the formula like acetate is C2H3O2 with a negative one charge. Um, ammonium right here, this is the only one that has a positive charge. That's the only one you'll ever see written first. So if you have NH4 with a plus one, you'll see it in the first spot. You'll find out why on the next video, um, why it's written first. But all of the other ones, like cyanide is CN with a negative one charge. Dichromate, Cr2O7 with a negative two. So these groups of elements are stuck together. They have a charge, which allows them to um, bond in an atom, and um, we'll use them a lot with your nomenclature. So with the examples that I have, how you're going to see them, let me switch over to my document camera. So you might see them in formulas coming up in the next few days. 
And when you see them in formulas in the next couple days, like this is copper, Cu, and then this NO3 is locked into these parentheses. With those being locked into the parentheses, that's a brain trigger to let you know that that's a polyatomic ion. The charge has disappeared in the compound. You're going to find out why, like I said, in that swap and drop video. Here's another example. You have Mg3PO42. Um, this is magnesium. It's bonded with phosphate, PO4. Um, so this is your polyatomic ion. Now this example is not in parentheses. C2H3O2 on your list is called acetate. Um, acetate is C2H3O2 with a negative one. It's not in parentheses because there's only one of them. In this example and this one, there's two of those polyatomic ions that were necessary. Um, so that's why we had to lock it in those parentheses to show that we needed two in that compound of the PO4 or of the NO3. But in this case, there was only one needed. Um, in this case, your NH4, that's ammonium, IUM, um, this one is the only one you'll ever see written first. It's paired up with sulfur here. And then this one is gold with hydroxide. Hydroxide is OH. Um, there's two hydroxides here, and then there's only one of my gold. So as we look at these polyatomic ions, you're always going to find them on your list. Um, if you didn't print or pick up one of these polyatomic ion sheets um, with the periodic table, um, yours aren't laminated, this is just my class set, but there are lists of these in the resources in Schoology. So you always have access to one of these um, and you're looking at the top portion up here. If you're wondering what in a normal year you'd have to memorize, they have the little stars next to them. So you would need to know that the hydroxide is OH negative one, nitrate is NO3 minus one, the majority of them are ending in eight because those are the most common ones that you'll use in um, AP Chemistry. And then from there, like in a college level course or in AP Chem, you would have to know, if you know the eights, you take away an oxygen for a night, you add one for a per, um, things like that. So it's just an easy baseline to get started with with your polyatomic ions. But for right now, we're just going to use them in our compounds.